the stark reality is that our lives had very little value to our ancestors. My job, I've tried to avoid talking about her. That was Candace Owens, mouthpiece for white supremacy and perpetually the black friend that everybody refers to when they say they can't be racist. I'm not saying anything new. Neither is Candace with this brief history of slavery for PragerU. I don't know who's making some of these arguments they're debunking, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt and say that somebody, somewhere, is claiming white people started slavery. More on this later. But I'm deciding to talk about this and Candace because when I was reminded of this video, I noticed she didn't refer to black people as us and so she brought up the fact that Africans sold other Africans to Europeans. She said, our lives matter little to our ancestors. Here's what really happened. To meet the massive demand for labor, the Europeans looked to Africa. African slavery had existed for centuries in various forms. Some slaves were indentured servants with a limited term and the chance to buy one's freedom. Others were more like European serfs. In some societies, slaves could be part of a master's family, own land, and even rise to positions of power. This TEDx video would go on to say that when white captains came offering manufactured goods, weapons, and rum for slaves, African kings and merchants had little reason to hesitate. See, when 20 and odd Negroes reached Port Comfort in Virginia, it proved to be the start of the transatlantic slave trade. The year was 1619 and the human cargo is believed to have been captured during an ongoing war between Portugal and the Kingdom of Ndongo. These peoples of pre-colonial Angola had very little similarities with one another, different ethnicities, cultures, and religions, except for living on the same continent and having darker skin. Well, at least darker skin than people from Europe. But there was no reason for anyone to think that a person or people from the Congo Kingdom, for instance, are the same as those from Benin. But that's exactly what happened when colonizers grew, expanded, and codified a system into chattel slavery, which lasted hundreds of years and became a $3.5 billion industry. So no, Black people didn't sell our own, and these tribes and kingdoms weren't black until Europeans called them that. Furthermore, these Africans who would come to be known as black fought back. Njinga Mbandi was a fearless warrior queen, skilled negotiator, and outstanding military general who fought against the Portuguese and their expanding slave trade in Central Africa. In her lifetime, she ruled over two kingdoms, and she remains an icon in Angola today. Pause to read if you want to know more about her. Candace fails to mention any of this, in addition to the resistance of the enslaved, such as starving themselves so they can't be used, or committing suicide, jumping off of ships so they can't be sold. Also, slave revolts such as the Louisiana Rebellion, the Stono Rebellion, and Nat Turner's Rebellion. Black soldiers willing to fight with the British in order to gain their freedom during the American Revolution. Black soldiers weren't allowed to take up arms during the Civil War until about halfway through the fight, but when the time came, they battled. It's like they freed themselves. As I alluded to earlier, and to give Prager you some credit, no, white people didn't begin slavery. Candace spends over a minute and a half of a five minute video, 25% of the thing, making that point covering pre-imperial slavery. But white people did start the transatlantic slave trade and chattel slavery is exclusive to America though. She said white men were the first to formally end slavery while bringing up Britain and France, but Mexico abolished slavery in 1829 and Haiti liberated themselves in 1804 during the Haitian Revolution, declaring their independence from the French. Haiti freed themselves before Britain passed their Slavery Abolitionist Act. Clearly, what took place in Mexico and Haiti occurred before the 13th Amendment, too. And in America, slavery is still a punishment for crime, but hey. Speaking of, she mentions the 300,000 Union soldiers, overwhelmingly white, as she puts it, who died to end slavery in the Civil War. But they were fighting white men who wanted to maintain slaves. Never mind the fact that according to Walk Free Global Slavery Index, there are modern day slaves in Russia, very much a white country, and a resource PragerU uses for their video, and that there are modern day Confederates that her political party cozies up with. She wouldn't dare say white people sold themselves into slavery when talking about the English versus the Irish. All I really needed to know about this PragerU brief history of slavery video lies in the thumbnail featuring white hands and shackles. I mean, while talking about skin color and ethnicities, 
She says the Muslim empire enslaved Europeans like that's a racial group or something. I'm not sure of which is worse. If Candace wrote the script for this video or if she's regurgitating conservative contradictions brought to her by that Prager you. For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.